Okay, so. All right, so I haven't done streaming in a very long time. So hopefully everything's working. Just give me a quick moment to make sure all the tech is in place. Uh, trying to have a way to be able to see this. The, hello, come on. Kind of, uh, I've been wanting to do streaming for a while again and I figured you know what let's just do it keep putting it off and why is not the YouTube app gonna work right now on my tablet what's going on hello well, see if it's working on my phone <laughs> that would be really bad if like YouTube was down all of a sudden when I tried to start this stinking stream It's one of the things that stinks about doing the streaming is that, okay, it says that it's up on my phone, but for whatever reason, the entire app is not working on my tablet, so I guess I'll just oop, try to restart it, which is really good timing. It's really good timing. Oh, I can hear myself. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Devin, hey, whoa. Um, have I kept up with anything Halo? Uh, in terms of the games or the show? Or just Halo in general? Let's try to turn this tablet back on so I can start doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Mix this back up. Come on. Why's my tablet gonna be dumb? I feel like I need to zoom out a little bit on my face. No, not in. <laughs> uh, so I've, I've kind of set Halo aside personally, which really stinks, because obviously I was a huge fan of that for a long, long time, and I kind of set Halo aside because. 343 and Microsoft as a whole obviously doesn't care about me as a fan. Uh, they basically told me to go do things to myself with the way that they handled the Halo show, uh, in my opinion, and Halo Infinite because they didn't design that in a professional manner. <laughs> so it's, uh, that sucks. That sucks. I would love to see Halo get into proper hands of someone who genuinely cares about it, its lore, its history, its impact on an entire generation of gamers. And uh, I, 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 I really do genuinely hope to see that at some point in the future. Yeah, it's a reek. The dry brush. Yeah, my nasty one. So I'm going to be painting up these templates today. I've already started getting some ready by just putting a quick wash on them. I figure doing a wash on it all. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is come back and paint the raised letters and the box here. Thinking also doing the border, especially cause now that I've painted on it or put the wash on it. And then I'm gonna paint the top of each of the trees. So that way it will look green, but it will pop off the table with the other colors and it'll make it a little bit better on the eyes for uh, people watching at home as I use these for videos and streaming and also imagery. So actually, I'm going to be doing that one next. I just want to get this. So I want to be able to see the comments like. There we go. Oh, there's actually five people watching. Well, I'm one of them on this other device. Oh, I need to turn it down. I can hear myself. Okay, there we go. Hey Austin, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm gonna disappear off of my phone. Keep that on standby in case I need it. 
put this tablet up here so then I can actually work and still see comments. Hey, Roger. Wow, this, I'm <laughs> I'm genuinely surprised there's so many people in the middle of the day. I I decided I was gonna start streaming. Oh, you know what I forgot? One second, one second, one second, one second. I need my work apron. One second. Sorry about that. Okay, I realized I have a painting apron that I put together. So that way I don't accidentally flick wash juice onto my clothes because uh, I have ruined other clothes by painting at this station before. And then I also realized after, I don't have a drink. So I had to go get water. I told you that the stream was kind of like fired from the hip. So I'm really glad that there's actually any people here. Okay. I'm gonna get started. So what I'm doing for those who are new to the stream or just joining, we're doing these uh, templates. These are Battlefield Revelations Battlefield terrain templates. I made these myself, uh, which is awesome for me learning modeling. Uh, there's a bunch of different sizes. There's three different terrain types, and go over all that later. But I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, jumping into this. Let me check the chat because I wasn't out here. Uh, just got off of school. Well, thank you, Roger. Anyway, I appreciate it. Yeah. An assignment for film school purple. I didn't know you were in film school. I saw you posting about your new book project. OG Hey the Review fan of yours. It was like 9, 10 when I first started watching your vids and 23 now. Oh my goodness. You make me feel older. How has your miniature series been going? It's uh, it's been going. Not bad. <laughs> um, it's different because you know, you're making content for your own property as opposed to things like halo and stuff like i used to do uh but i this is i love to do this so i'm trying to it's difficult sometimes because you're the one that decides all of the decisions as the creator and as the developer and as the person in charge so it's difficult sometimes to always know what is the right project to jump in on and i realize that streaming is a big part of what I wanted to be able to be doing when I went full time a couple of months ago and I didn't take advantage of it and now I'm going to. Does it say relevate your minis? I really hope it doesn't. So this is my plan is going forward Tuesdays and Thursdays, probably about the same time. I'm gonna be streaming. Uh, I figure, you know, one of the things that's been difficult for me has been committing to streaming because my night schedule sometimes changes. So obviously it makes sense to do streaming at night if you're in North America, uh, but I, it's hard for me to commit to it. So then I realized about a week ago, uh, you dummy, why aren't you streaming in the daytime then? <laughs> so this is the first day. Oh, if I had that on, if I had relevate your minis <laughs> on the apron, I guess I could do that at some point. Well, that's cool, Austin. I had looked at doing film school myself at one point, so uh, I'm interested to see how things pan out for you. Not just because I decided to go a different route, obviously, but uh 
as someone who's been around for a while, I, I really hope it does work out for you because it's a really cool industry, uh, especially if you can be actually be able to make some projects yourself. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing that, Devin, because I, like I said, streaming is something that I've known for a while I should be doing, but I didn't, uh, it, it's, I don't know. There's always excuses. There's always an excuse for why you didn't start doing something when you knew you were supposed to, and I'm tired of living that way, and I want to start doing things different. So here is day one to hopefully being much different. So... For those of you who don't paint regularly or miniature paint at all, what I'm hoping to do with this is I'm applying a thin wash just so that the trees here will stand out more on their own once I get around to painting them. And I'm holding it at an angle, hoping that the wash, because it's very you know wet and kind of will run, is that if I hold it at an angle, it'll help kind of work with me rather than against me and pool in places that I don't want it to. And the purpose of a wash is just to help when it dries to give a little bit of a darker contrast in the shadows and the pockets and such so that it kind of just stands out a little bit better on its own. So I don't really have to be super careful with this because I'm going to come back and paint all of the trees individually with a different shade of green so that hopefully what will happen is that there will be two shades of green it conveys easily to everybody who sees the image or video later that this is used in. Oh, it's trees. Yes, it is trees. And hopefully it will work really quick. It'd be cool if Austin did. Austin's been around in the community on and off for quite a while uh, from the novel side, which is another thing that I've been putting off uh, due to my own in my own head things and what I'm looking to do is to, to change that as well in the very extreme near future and for real this time um, I'm tired of having excuses and not doing what I'm supposed to be doing I don't know if I had, I was watching a video today about burnout from other game designers. And I don't know if it's something that maybe I was kind of going through for a few months or it was maybe a case of imposter syndrome or it was just good old fashioned, just nervousness and fear, but I'm quite over that now. Not necessarily over in the sense that like it's completely defeated, but in the sense of I don't want to be that. I don't want to live like that. So I'm not. I'm going to do what I have to do to overcome it. Which is super easy to say. It's harder to do. <laughs> but at least acknowledging it is the first step. So I know this isn't uber exciting, but this is something that has to be done. And I'd rather hang out with you guys than sit here all by myself. So streaming at least made sense. And I'll tear through these fast enough and then they'll already be dry. Like I already had done three before I started this. So they'll already be done by the time I get around to it so I can start actually painting trees. And it's a little bit of busy work, but has to be done as well as the images gonna be doing that new Kickstarter here very soon so I need to uh, get all these other components in place yeah no that's yeah I, I realized there was I've already been kicking myself and been feeling like I need to be writing. And then I saw a post on Facebook, a memory on Facebook. And I had published like five books in like a year. And I was, you know, I was all proud of myself in the post and stuff, right? Which I should be. And then I realized 
I haven't published any since that. And why? I don't have a good reason. It was just because of my own doubt that I wasn't doing a good job. Like, what was the reason that I really stopped? I don't have a great reason. So then why am I not doing it now? You know? It's just so easy to get busy with stuff. I was really thinking once I went full time that like, okay, everything's going to change. I'm going to be able to write. I'm going to be able to make, I'm going to paint regularly. I'm going to do all this and that. And then a couple months have gone by and I think I've just been so concerned about everything. I mean, it's obviously nerve wracking to be working for yourself completely because there's a lot of uh, pressure on that, especially when you have kids. Not mess that up. Didn't end up taking advantage of it the way I wanted to. All right, Roger. Thank you for stopping by, though. Get 100% get that outlook at some point. You just got to do what you got to say instead of saying what you need to do. Yeah. Tired of saying it, not doing it, you know? This is over so I can see. A little easier. No, still can't see. My uh, painting desk wasn't exactly set up for streaming, and I just decided, yeah, I'm just going to do it anyway. <laughs> You've been focusing a lot of attention on the miniatures, which, yeah, and it has been awesome. Um, it's, it's just that the miniature side, it, it doesn't always maybe make what you think it's going to make. Like we've just had this weird lull in the community and I don't know why. And it's been driving me nuts. And, you know, just kind of realizing like, well, it's not going to change on its own necessarily. And, uh, see, I would have just gotten wash on me. I just flicked it on my apron. <laughs> but. All right, that one's finally done. So we only have uh, four more green ones left. This one didn't get as much on the way I wanted to with the green, so I'm just going to leave the wash on a little bit thicker. I had bought a whole bunch of wash. Like, Army Painter makes these cans of it. These little paint cans of it. And I bought them when uh, when a local game store was going out of business, and I never used them. And I was like, you know, I got all this stuff. Start, let's use it. It's a lot. You can tell it's a lot of uh, reflection and, and <laughs> make myself use things going on right now. I may have to come back and do that in a second, but it's fine. Oh, hey, Remy! I didn't even know you were here. I missed that. Oh, what is this riddle? middle of... The, yeah, because we're going to start doing streaming now all the daytimes. Finally going to do something. I'm just excited for the new factions and seeing how they interact on the field and in the lore with each other. Well, the pirates, I need to get some lore out for them. The generic pirates are now available. Uh, and uh, they already have, you know, they obviously have some of their own unique units now. Quite a few, actually. Phobos, Deimos, Buccaneer, Novich. So I've had a little time to myself lately. Been having to work more than normal. No, I I get that. I gotta, you know, at the end of the day, even even still, Remy, even if like you're not able to like do the hobby side of things, like with revelations and such, I still just appreciate people stopping by and being part of the community, because that still is is such a huge huge part of all this is just having a, a community of people around you to keep keep things going and i've unfortunately been a little sensitive to the uh falling back into my old habit of uh well if nobody's commenting is anybody watching is anybody reading is anybody playing does anybody care it's not a good habit it's not a good outlook either because not everyone is going to comment, so there'll always be people in your own community that are doing things that you don't know are doing it. 
and that's totally fine. They can just be quiet. That's that's okay. You can't only be motivated by when people are commenting, because as that ebbs and flows, it's just how it is. And if that's the only thing that motivates you, then uh, you're not going to get a lot of motivation all the time. Ursala's here now, yeah. Have you taken your work like this mini series and books to any conventions? I went to MegaCon a couple months ago. And was... I I haven't, and the and the main reason has been that it's it's expensive to go. Um, and that that's the primary primary thing. Plus, looking at using it to uh, we only have one vehicle for my family, so if I take our van for a few days it's difficult <laughs> to just leave my my wife here alone with no vehicle uh but i i absolutely want to and if this kickstarter can do well enough then maybe it will open up some doors that conventions can finally be a thing well uh yes remy tuesdays it's going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays, so, and I'm hoping about this same time of day, like 2, 2.30 till about 5, depending on what's going on. Because um, what I'm, what I would really like to do, what I'd like to see as, as a personal thing is outside of this Kickstarter, or maybe because of this Kickstarter, ew, that's a lot of pulling there, let's pull that down a little bit. Out of this Kickstarter, I would really like to be able to say goodbye to the freelance work once and for all, because that's been the thing that's been preventing me from being able to commit to things. Because even though I've been doing this technically full-time, I've still needed the freelance work to supplement. And if that can finally go away, then I can commit to a lot of things on my own schedule, like writing. Because, I don't know, I don't... Trying to make myself to my own thing. I need to be out of my own head. That's gonna change going forward. Get this done quickly. I don't don't have to be super perfect because we're gonna come back on this anyway and touch it up. Although I'm thinking I won't touch this big woods rectangle. I won't really mess with that. That one's done. Set that on the other guy. Oh, Keith David, that's a cool picture to have. I know a guy who got him to sign. It was uh, for a card game, but he got him to sign something. He's like, oh, man, you have to meet Keith David. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's one of the probably the only people that I actually would. Because I'm not usually like, oh, you got to meet a celebrity. But Keith David is one of those people that uh, I'd like to get to meet. Yeah, it is. It is really hard when, I, yeah, like Kersal is saying, it's expensive to do those and everything, and if uh, you have you have to bring other people with you and product, and so it's it's one of those things where like, yes, got to do it, just got to do it when the time is right. God willing, the time will be right very soon. <laughs> Yeah, that would help, is having another business to team up with. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I want to meet Keith David, because of the Arbiter. Like, that's... Arbiter's such a cool character. I feel like... Halo, or Bungie and then 343 really did the Arbiter dirty after Halo 2. They just didn't take advantage of him like they could have. Not in the games, anyway. I haven't read all the novels, but at least in the, the games. Yeah. When you're doing the washes like this, why not use a bigger, flatter brush? You know, I don't probably have a great reason. I could try it. Let me just see. 
I don't know about a flatter brush, but I could do a bigger brush. Uh, no, not that one. How about... That one is bigger. We'll just try this just for a second and see. As long as it doesn't make more bubbles for me. Because sometimes that happens. It's weird. Get out of there! Don't damage my work! Played Halo 5, but they barely used him in that game for not appearing for- Yeah, it-, it well, Halo 5 was its own <laughs> forgettable cluster of <laughs> just stupidity. <laughs> like, like, big time. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I, so i've been i've been playing halo and um my kids have been watching me and uh we've we've been playing all the way from combat evolved now we're into halo 4 so they you know uh been watching you know from 2 and 3 and the progression of the story and you know they've been getting all into it and stuff and then we get into halo 4 and my my middle child's like i don't I don't like the grunts. Why do they look like that? Why do they sound like that? And I was just, I don't know. Don't know why they made them that way. Don't know why they changed how they were. And it was something like, I didn't have to put in their their head. I didn't say anything about how they're gonna look. I don't like them. I, I left it as, as neutral of influence as I could, because I have my own opinions. And it's hilarious to me that they have the exact same mindset as I did the first time that I saw them. You know what else could do? Thin that wash way down and just put to the whole thing. We can ice cube trade. I don't got a few days. I gotta I gotta get it done. It probably would work though, but I gotta get it done. I gotta I gotta paint. I have to paint. Campaign's too close. I was already concerned enough yesterday because I was sick because I got it from one of my kids. I was like, no, am I going to have to push the campaign back a week? I really hope not. I still hope not. There's still so much to do, but I think, I think it's going to be okay to get it done by next week. But even if it did have to get pushed back one week, it's not the end of the world. Or really one more week. But it's still gonna happen. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna paint that Battle Damage Sierra that's gonna be the free file for the campaign. I wanna paint that on stream. And hopefully see what other people come up with when they- ah! it themselves I'm trying I'm trying bigger brush yeah but oh, let's see yeah, 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 yeah. at least I'm getting through these pretty quickly <laughs> Well, I hope I am raising men of culture. <laughs> it's funny in some ways because, like, it. I watched. You know, they, they all have their own interests. My youngest is still two. You know, he's three, so he's still developing his personality, so to speak. But it's funny how like they, they have certain interests, and yeah, it's probably in part because I influence it. But in other parts, like they just like certain things that like I enjoyed as a kid, and that's really cool to see and share that with them um, 
My my dad was into some of the stuff that I was, but definitely not to the same extent, which isn't a huge shock because just different, you know, generational outlook on things. But I had definitely wished that I could have shared more of the interest that I had as a kid with my dad. That was something that always you know, kind of bummed me out that he wasn't into that. So it was kind of just, I mean, I had my, 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 one of my brothers was into it heavily with me, but there's still something different about your dad doing it with you than a sibling or a friend. Yeah, we got to do that Sierra soon. Very, very soon. Maybe uh, maybe we can do that on the Thursday stream. If I can get it primed tomorrow, maybe we can do that. Because I have the parts. Oh, I have to still clean them, but uh, printed. So I went and lubricated the Z-Rod earlier. Finally swapped the new resin. Just covered that I don't have to make any significant changes to my settings. That's always good when it comes to printing. I've been running into a issue with my filament printers. I have two new ones and suddenly they hate each other. And I didn't have a problem with the one until I set up the second one. Don't understand why. Still got to figure out what's wrong with that. It's when it's printing, like if I was printing this, the front left corner, or sorry, the back left top left corner would be slightly bent up, but nothing else. Everything else prints great. And I made no significant change to the setting. No, no changes to settings, really. Uh, environment is like the exact same as what it was before I set up the second printer. Same filament brands, same files, because I'm just doing these same, you know, I was printing ones that were rugged rather than woods. Don't know why it was acting up. Trying to figure it out still. It's a little frustrating. Apparently used to watch Transformers with my dad. Oh, and he liked, but I don't remember any of it, though he also instilled me with my obsession for video games. <laughs> Yeah, my kids definitely love video games. A lot of the same video games that I would enjoy as a kid. A lot of Mario titles. Um, Pokemon's a little bit harder just because right now there's, you know, the, the, one of them's gotten better at reading, the other one's still trying to catch up. So I'm sure once uh, they're both able to, because they already have an interest in them visually. They've liked to watch me play before. I have no idea what Maxwell's demons are, but you know what? If they're to blame, that sucks. They're pretty stupid. Not a fan of them. I'll tell you that right now. Bubbles are constantly trying to stick around, man. Yeah, I never, I never had gotten, I know you and I have talked about this, but for other people, I never got into Minecraft. Um, I am certain that at least my oldest will probably really love it. Because uh, he, he's totally of a much more chilled laid-back personality and I think Minecraft 
works really well for someone who's going to be like that. I'm more like my middle child, where like there has to be like a goal that I'm working toward. Now he'll he'll play, I'll just say mindless games when he can, but I think he really enjoys winning. <laughs> so I think he'll be more of like I have to be doing something, going somewhere, fighting something. But I know Minecraft has its benefits because, you know, you can actually build things and you're, you're problem solving and, and other things around. Which is neat. And I also never was into Zelda. Ever. I tried it a little bit. It just was not for me. I just, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't grab me. Which is so weird because of how much, like, Nintendo games I've played growing up. Zelda just didn't do anything for me. But I know they're insanely popular, so it's, like, I definitely, like, I can respect it from afar. That's probably, like, racing games, too. Like, I never was in the racing games, really, except for, like, Mario Kart, because it's fun, because you have things to, like, blast the other players with. The chill I saw that meme, yeah, the children do yearn for the mines. <laughs> oh yeah, I used to love digging. There was no reason why I loved it so much. My mom would always tell us all kinds of reasons why not to do it. It didn't change it. Loved to dig. Absolutely loved it. Gosh, I I don't know how much, how many times that my brother and I would dig. We had a spot right outside our back door, right, right out off of the porch that we would dig in all the time. Make like uh, some sort of base out of it, like underground base and stuff. Awesome times. Final consensus. Welcome. Well, I know Kursala definitely is, like, both. He, he definitely was Zelda and Pokemon. I was 100% Pokemon kid. 100%. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Heavy. That was, that was what I did for a while. That was... I don't want to say it was my identity, but, like... <laughs> was, it's pretty up there. All right. Start this last one. It doesn't look like it has the most perfect application of spray paint, but we're gonna make it work. Gonna make it work. So that's what Pokemon or Zelda can much more of a Warcraft. Uh, I didn't even play either Warcraft or Civs till like. Well, I never really did Warcraft. I got a little bit of StarCraft. I did not like that. Even though I liked Red Alert. Command and Conquer was okay. Red Alert was better, in my opinion. For whatever that's worth. Oh. Leaned more towards Zelda. Hmm, interesting. Personality differences. It probably had a lot to do with as well that like the setting of Zelda just didn't I don't know why it didn't interest me because I, I wasn't against fantasy but it just it, I don't know it didn't really grab my interest and I know that that'll do things you know for why someone might stick with something longer or get more invested into it over another setting or IP I don't think I have played StarCraft 2. I, uh, 
I kind of fell out with the real-time strategy kind of games like that. Like Civs was a little bit different because you had other ways to win. But I kind of, I wanted to start getting more competitive, especially because like I played Halo so much. And maybe not necessarily like compete like in a tournament, but more of like I, I enjoyed the, the, you know, challenge against other human players. And I realized when I started playing games like War, uh, StarCraft, I wasn't good at them. Um, and in order to become good, you just kind of use like, it seemed to me at the time, a couple of very similar strategies. And I just didn't like the idea of, I'm going to Zerg rush, I'm going to do X, you know, and that's how I'm going to win. And there's no way for you to counter it, or you have to do this to counter it. Otherwise I'm going to win. And I felt like it, it made it too samey and there wasn't room for exploring and trying new things because you would just pretty much lose because this other guy's optimized his build. And I just kind of like fell out of interest with it like all together. And I just kind of leaned more into the first person shooter games because I probably in part because I, I was better at them. Yeah, I never, I also, I, I would play some RPG stuff, because isn't that more like what Warcraft would be considered? Yeah, and that was another thing. We we had computers, but I really was into consoles back then. Now, with everyone basically doing the same thing, I can have my Switch, and then I can have my PC and play pretty much whatever I want. Although, I don't really play very many games. I have been dabbling a little bit with uh, Helldivers, though. That's been the first new game that I've purchased in since Halo Infinite, I think. I don't think I've bought another game since that. That was like brand new. I really enjoy pretty much every aspect of Helldivers other than that I wish it had its own campaign. But I appreciate that the game is cheaper because it doesn't have a campaign. I only wish other bigger AAA properties, Halo, would have done the same if they were just going to screw me in the end. If some of us believed in the property enough to put $60 on the table for it to just go on sale a few months later. Yeah. tell you what though i no matter what halo game comes out next i will not be buying it the moment it drops i don't care how good it looks i don't care what story they tell me i don't care what features it has i don't care who's involved in the project i'm not buying it right away i will wait at minimum three to four months wait and see how it does how it performed how did it did it launch at 100 percent or more of this oh sorry guys we only could launch the game at partial completion you know because dates and everything i refuse to support another triple a game you know it's one thing for a smaller developer to do it or to constantly be updating right because they're small and they they have to flex with the support that they do get and they don't have all the money and the infrastructure and the talent on all that together and the experience these big game companies they don't get any more of my mercy they don't get any more of my forgiveness tired of it especially with the way that they do things oh we're gonna hire freelancers to develop the core code of our game that'll be intelligent then we'll fire them or we can just replace them with somebody cheaper after oh we don't know how to work our own game oh what that's crazy I would never want to go to the movie theater and be like, oh, I can't wait to watch 80% of this movie while I wait for the rest of it to be finished. No, nobody tolerates that. 
Yet they do that in the video game industry because it's okay. They don't have to deliver a finished product. But it's just because people have these strong nostalgia for brands or something that they're willing to... Well, it's also because these companies, they have everyone kind of by the nose because they're all doing the exact same behavior. And a lot of people don't have the ability or the willpower to be like, well, I'm not going to buy this then. Because if they didn't buy it, they didn't support it, then that crap would stop real freaking quick. Exactly, purple. Yeah, they need to give us finished games. This is ridiculous. Yeah, the indie games have been. They've been really, they've been able to pull ahead a lot better. I haven't seen a single person comment on Helldivers and say, oh, well, man, I wish it was finished. I haven't seen that one time. <laughs> the Sierra Simulator. Yeah, where's my <laughs> $3 million to make it happen? Because I would. I'd start it tomorrow. <laughs> when am I going to make a game? Like a video game? Is As soon as uh, someone can help me do it. Basically, I want to do it tomorrow, but I don't have the connections even to do it. I don't even know how much that would be. Oh, it hurts me to even think about it. Just got to clean out some of this extra flack that I missed. Sometimes when you're doing the printing on the re uh, the filament printers, there's these little strings, and they just sometimes I went through and tried to get them all, but it's hard because they're sometimes difficult to see until they're painted. You don't need three million, cause uh, I feel like you would. Well, I know. I, I I even thought about trying to do a web comic. Um, and some other uh, ideas that I think could happen. It's just getting the money well like a graphic novel i think that would be a very fun project but need the money there first i figure something like that is probably in the realm of i don't know 10 to 15k just to get one going with a with a lower budget artist but I don't know if making that 10 to 15k is super easy to do. It'd have to be a really good story, I think, for a wider audience. Come on. Yeah. There we go. But it'd be cool. Just do another Kickstarter, yeah. <laughs> I kind of hate having to go back to Kickstarter as much as I have, but it works. I see a little bit better now why some of these other companies are doing it. Because it just, it doesn't always work. Because I've had some that failed during COVID, but they at large work. I don't know if I will ever miss the Kickstarter days though. Like once 
once we're past that, I will be very happy to be past it. Because it has its own uh, stresses and such that go along with it. Well, um, actually, something like that woe is being worked on. The uh, virtual tabletop experience. I'm waiting for a uh, more definitive timeline to share more specific details, but uh, if they keep moving forward, it'll be this year, maybe sooner. Well, I know someone who's making a video game right now, and he was saying it would take 20 to 30 million, depending on the type of game he's doing, to get it done the right way. Uh, so I figure I would be aiming for something a little bit lower key. So three is probably something. These strands are so odd, they like... So for this webcomic of yours, are you planning to do drawings for the panels, or are you going to have renders? Could even do both just to make it weird. I I would do... Well, what I would want to do is just drawings, because I think those ones just look better. In my experience, so far, as a reader. <laughs> and I know I found a... I was... Um, shown a group that has a bunch of artists in it that they will do imagery and such um they'll even do comic panels basically graphic novel so it only be it's a couple hundred dollars a page basically and i don't know how much they would be for something that's more mechanical but there's a lot of artists out there looking for work in other countries that you can hire for less it's not cheap it's not free but it's less than american artists um but i figure it would still be ten to fifteen ish k to pull a project together because you'd want to do you know lots of concept art lots of like okay wh what does this mech look like in this art style what level of detail are we going to add to it um we need to be able to see some pretty cool scenery so those those pages will probably cost double or triple because they're going to take that much more time to do uh you know and, and and whatnot at least i wouldn't have to pay for the writing exactly uh whoa it's going to be on its own platform not tabletop simulator it's a Booting Torch? I've never tried that. Well, what I'm hoping is that they won't really show up in the images, but I'm just trying to get some of the ones more that seem a little egregious. I wanted to ask about Carlger. How many total designs do you have or have planned for the faction at this point? So at this point, obviously there's the ones we're doing. Oops, sorry, it's me. We're obviously doing the ones for the Kickstarter. So that's the two vehicles, infantry drone, and two mechs. So that's six designs. I would like to, as soon as we can lock down this friggin' work on the uh, on the infantry, I would like to do. I have concept art for a whole new battle armor, power armor, um, that is ready to like. Like when an artist says, "Hey," or a modeler says, "I'm ready to do it," like I'm ready to go. Uh, it's just been frustrating to keep everything moving. I thought we had found somebody 
and turns out that's not gonna work. So at least I was able to get the Raider design done, but it won't be something necessarily to move forward 100% because I need someone who can do hard surface design as well as organic. Um, doesn't mean that they have to be able to do like a mech, but they have to be able to do armor and weaponry and such. So just have to keep searching. Uh, as far as other mechs and stuff, I don't normally spend a lot of time thinking about all the different designs that they will have until it's time to start doing that, just because there's usually a lot of other work to do. But I know that you know, they're going to get a very similar assortment to the other factions of plenty of mechs, uh, plenty of vehicle choices, multiple infantry design choices once that can move forward. Um, like I also have concept art ready to go for updated riflemen for the Union of Stars. I, I paid for that a couple months ago, um, but because the infantry modeler didn't work out, I can't really move forward with it like I wanted to. I wanted to update them because I, I just feel like the, the old design worked, but wasn't 100% what I wanted. So i to do something different. Yeah, basically, Remy. I have an artist who can do really good infantry designs and character design work. Um, I'd probably even use him for part of the graphic novel in terms of like character design to be able to show the, the graphic novelist. But um, the modeler part is hard to lock down. I don't know why either, because you would think that there's enough people learning it at this point out on the internet, but... <laughs> it's it's tough. It's tough to get people who know what they're doing. A lot of people say they know what they're doing. <laughs> and then when you start really, like, pushing it, they, they don't. Hopefully that starts changing again soon. Yeah, it, it really is. Chrysala knows because he's working with me on a lot of these projects and he's seeing the inside of it. And it's a lot of people saying they can and a lot of people not willing to commit to timetables really, not like stick to them. And even that's more forgivable than not being able to actually do the work that you said you could do to the level that you said you could do it. You know, like that's the real, <laughs> that's the really big problem is a lot of these people say they can. And I'm not expecting like games workshop level work either. Like just, we have certain things in place. I just need you to be able to do that. It's the joys of owning your own business. But it in some ways has pushed me to learn new skills like doing this kind of modeling which is not anything nuts but you know i i can help offset some of the work that kursala is doing to free him up for other projects and then you know if we had another modeler 
basically kind of doing that, that would already be a huge boost. But we'll find them. Someone is out there looking, wanting to be part of an actual team that's actually making projects and actually getting things finished and isn't one of the big dog players. You know, they want to be part of something that they can actually impact rather than be another cog in the machine. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I forget. I did see that earlier, Remy. I apologize, I hadn't responded to it, but I, I thank you for that. I I always appreciate anyone recognizing kind of what part of this takes to get these things done. It's not a small task when you're doing a lot of it on your own. That doesn't make you some sort of hero, just, you know, it. it but this is, enjoyable but it is a lot of pressure when it's your primary source or what you'd like it to be your primary source of income because then there's there's a whole new level of pressure of like you're making a product and people have to buy it right because otherwise you don't have a business and you're going to quickly be looking for work with somebody else I'm realizing that a lot more lately. The last few, the last two months, a lot more. Well, I have to do writing too. I have, I, I have to, have to. I know that's what I'm supposed to do. I don't get to have excuses anymore. I'm trying to get on the other side of this Kickstarter, or at least see how much it's going to make, and that will either alleviate a lot of stress I've had. In my own mind or it will kind of make more stress if it doesn't so we shall see yeah yeah when you're doing a lot of it on your own Remy, like you're doing, like I, I get that 100%. Even though I have the the appearance of people helping with like the play testing, I really, at the end of the day, don't. It's really still me because I don't have a team of people to be like, hey, here's this. Go play test it 10 times. Tell me what you think. I don't have that. A lot of it is still like family members being like, hey, do you mind like, trying this with me <laughs> and then like trying to get an honest opinion out of like what do you really think about this would you buy this <laughs> i hope you don't really like this and not hate it because i feel like i'm on the border of just friggin' hating it but it's terrain it's meant to look messy so i need to make it look messy and then maybe i won't hate it Terrain templates.
Well, I appreciate that, Austin. I'm going to be going through... I know one of the things I have to do first, and I need to lay out a timetable for it, is go back through and... Um, I need to update the um, Kingdom of Sand novels all the way because stuff has changed in terms of how things work. Update those and then start just crushing crushing it and pushing forward with books four and five. I don't I don't think Spectre really needs to be touched. I'm still going to look at it, just do a read through, but I think it's fine. I think um, Rise of the Inquisitor is also probably fine. So now we're just looking at just getting uh, Kingdom of Sand finally finished all the way. I already know what I want to do for the book covers. I just have to see how it uh, can be done. It's not going to focus on the max. It's going to focus on Mikhail. And uh, I think it'll be a really fun progressional kind of thing to describe the stories visually, but also kind of showcase the changes that he's going through as a person. Thank you, Will. I know we have some other stuff I have to talk to you about anyway. This way because I'm already gonna. It needs to still be this way. It's over. So that's the pooling where it's not supposed to be pooling. Making sure I'm still on the target for this stream. But we've got all this stuff going with the Kickstarter. We'll hopefully bring in some other new people like it did last time. Um, doing the battle damaged versions of everything will be really neat. Getting Battlefield out there for everybody. I mean, granted, the beta rules are, but doesn't really have like a lot of stats yet. Um, see ya, Chrysala. Thank you for stopping by, hanging out. The, uh, I think the beta rules are better now since the last time I played the other day. I need to update the rules so everyone else has those same ones. But I made a couple of changes like I talked about on here on YouTube. And I think the game flows better. And it feels better. It, I think it works better. So I'm very hopeful for this to uh, be enjoyable for everybody. But we will see once it, you know, finally kicks off. And I'm a little nervous in part because it's like, well, you're making a new game, but you're not technically making new models. But I am at the same time because they're battle damage versions. So as far as, you know, who owns what and who, you know, new products, it is new. But I always get nervous whenever there's a Kickstarter because you never know how it's going to do. Because I've had unsuccessful ones, so I don't have the illusion of like, oh, it's all gonna do great. Okay, well, yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Oops. Um. 
Um, once this wash runs out, I think I'm going to switch over to start painting the trees because this is just busy work. <laughs> it's crucial busy work, but it's just freaking busy. If anyone does have any questions on the Kickstarter or anything, just let me know. Because, like, there's enough stuff I can share now that we're getting really close anyway to the campaign. I don't have information specifically on the tiers yet that I can list. Because some of that is still in the air changing until I have it fully typed up. Because sometimes I just part of the process of doing a lot of it on your own is that you're like, Oh, okay, you know, that actually doesn't make sense now that I think about it. So that a while ago. Oh, it feels so good when these are done. So is there any particular videos you guys would like to see for Battlefield? Because that's what I'm gearing up to when I'm painting all these fours, be able to gear up to start doing those. rules on how to play the beta video we'll see gameplay of it okay yeah yeah there will definitely be gameplay purple um <laughs> a neon version of revelations would be fun <laughs> i'm sure one of the planets actually probably is that way there's got to be one of them somebody's city is just like yeah but what if neon what if neon all the time what if neon neon
Once you have that, you can probably get more inquiries on what people want more on. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. If possible, you could place several cameras and then edit it to give a more cinematic look. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to at least do two cameras, one for me and then one for the, the tabletop um, and edit that together. Because I think you're right. That'll be more visually interesting to watch. Um, and hopefully that'll build interest in itself just seeing well how does this how does this flow together is that a Faust Union or Union of Stars grudge match because that's very different Both would be interesting. Drew the idea of many different cultures clashing like neon 80s futuristic with Mad Max. Yeah. Well, and that's that is one fun aspect of Revelations is that like there are other planets that feel kind of not full on Western, but they're they're more of that sort of mindset of there's a lot more freedom happening in the sense of you know what you would expect like in the west wild west and then others are still very developed metropolitan areas that are going to feel entirely different for those residents entirely different kind of in a way that like the ex uh, no a uh, foundation how the found if you guys have seen the foundation show there are planets there that feel very western but then will feel incredibly futuristic on a different planet and i i love that idea that they're not all samey you know they're not even all the same level of tech because just the way that the technology moves around the verse isn't equal isn't simultaneous much like you know even in our own planet we have cultures that are far less technologically advanced than others kind of catching up to a level of same in having electricity and internet and everything but still still vastly different in terms of architecture and, and culture behavior to to each other or or foods whatnot That would be weird, Remy. That would, and it might, it might be able to work in some of like the Orca planets, because some of those can be so different. Uh, it might even work on some of the Republic planets, but a lot of the Faust Union ones will probably be, like, in one area of this. Uh, well, no, they, they probably would have a, a, a difference because of how like the Sturmhammers are so different, which have to develop their culture more as well, and how different that makes everything. For the citizens because it is very different depending on there's definitely a, a a class system in the in the faust union the haves and haves nots is is a real thing they really are the possibilities really are there's so much room for differences in the stories and what takes place And why isn't this freaking wash run out yet? Still, I'm gonna try to do all these like little ones first. <laughs> I want to paint trees, but I don't want to waste this wash. <laughs> I really hate wasting paint. It's, I really, really hate it. But I'm also really wanting to move past this. But it was my goal to try to get all of these done today, which I knew was absolutely a ridiculous goal, but I'm still going to try. So they do all kind of have to have a wash done first.
basically at the halfway mark right now. Of all the different templates that needed to wash on them. But yeah, now the Republic has a lot of difference planet to planet as well, like Destiny and Marie compared to uh, a planet like uh, Thanksgiving or Bronze, <laughs> Paradiso. Life will be very different if you live on Paradiso compared to Destiny. Very, very different. Very different. Paradiso is effectively like one giant luxury planet and Destiny is kind of just a dust ball. <laughs> you don't want to be on Destiny. Might not be so awful to visit, but you don't want to be stuck there as a citizen. Maybe Mikhail will fix that. Change the whole, whole game, man. I was just about to say I was done, then I realized, oh, I haven't done Rugged yet on this one. Yeah, Haven's very different too. Especially, you know, from the difference of, like, if you lived on a Haven planet, or, like, you visited Kaladar, the mercenary homeworld, that would be very different experience for that person. I mean, Kaladar is, like, really visiting the Republic in a lot of ways, but they have a lot of money there. Kaladar is is its own it really is its own league oh, we could just put this into here and just mill it I don't know if much of it is even worth trying to add it just... Oh yeah, for sure. Seeing the difference between all 10. I mean, especially like you look at Karldra and the Faust Union who are adjacent to one another and then you go to the Lotus Imperium and it's like stepping into another universe. The, the, the difference for someone who lives there is so huge. Well, okay, I'll say for the upper class, it's huge. It's a very big difference. The lower class... I wouldn't want to live in the Lotus Imperium for anything. <laughs> Not there wouldn't be enough money to pay me. <laughs> well, it, I wanted to those across the verses are fun. I, I really enjoy doing them. They they still haven't really paid for themselves in terms of Oh, thank you. Thank you. They haven't really paid for themselves in terms of how much work it was required to put into them. Um, and it's kind of like, do I treat it as, maybe not as a lost leader, but as just a bonus thing that people get, and I don't really fret about how much it sells for. Or not how much it sells for, how many, how many sales it gets. Let's try this color out and see what it does. <laughs> I guess that's true, but I'm still lower class in real life, so. I'm waiting to get that, waiting to get that upgrade. 
All right, now we need a good brush. Ah! But, at least right now in life, I'd rather be doing what I enjoy than doing what pays a bunch and I hate waking up in the morning. Are those war paint fanatic paints greeting you? Which ones? The army painter? War paints? These ones? Let's see how this looks. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't immediately hate it. You can definitely see the difference in the camera, so that's good. That's what I was going for. Yeah, and, and like purple, it's, you know, kind of you just realize you're making different decisions because you're trying to do something different and, you know, can't be, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough when you have kids because what was perfectly acceptable when I was younger isn't necessarily now in terms of, you know, everything. But then it's also very difficult time depending on the skill set that you have in this country you know, or just in the West in general. But I can speak more specifically to the United States. So... And I'm not saying that to whine or complain, it's just the reality of things. I'd rather live on 35, doing what I love, than 80, hating everything I do. <laughs> yeah. That is true. Well, it, it, every one of those, uh, every one of those installments in the Across the Verse does expand the lore, for sure. Um, and maybe it is worth going back and doing a new entry. I really love them, and I'm able to really like get them done pretty fast. Uh, which was an exciting thing for me is because it's like, okay, now we have another product and it didn't require several months of development or it didn't require a thousand dollars or three thousand dollars in investment. You know, I did a lot of it. I do actually the whole thing on my own, but uh, I still don't want to do a project that people don't want to buy. Kids definitely are uh, a change to that, but at the same time too, everything's just expensive. So if you wait to have kids when you finally have enough money, you may not be old enough or physically able to have kids. So I'd rather struggle somewhat than not have them. But that's because, to me, I've known for a long time that I wanted to have a family. So it was a very high priority. And for a time, it was my primary uh, drive, I don't, you know. So it, it I wasn't even doing, uh, this was before I was really working on Revelations. But, like, I wasn't even doing, like, hobby stuff, really, or anything. Like, I just, that was my primary thing. <laughs> Yeah. 
yeah 120k would be would be very nice depending on where you are in the country where i am it would be very nice especially making that online because then i can go wherever i want and even though i'd like to still stay there's a part of you that wants to still stay around your family but there's another part that's like well if the standard of living is in decline then i may just have to take my family my my own small group of a family and just move somewhere else that's still what my wife and i would like to do when we're financially able because this area is already extremely hard for my family and i my, my little ones and i i can only imagine that by the time my kids are old enough to start doing the same going through the same stuff that it's going to be even more difficult so part of me is like well then maybe I need to be the one to make the hard choice and move us so that maybe wherever we do go, maybe at least one of them will want to still stay around there. Instead of them kind of being in a place that like, well, mom and dad knew this area was going to be bad, but they stayed because it was going to be easier for them. And then now we have to make the hard choice and leave, you know, not, go back and forth it's not really a necessarily a right answer just answers yeah we'd love to adopt too but I, and I know not every 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 guy's up to being a dad like I know not not all of them are and what but Uh, yeah, oops. I'm hoping this is going to work. This green wants to separate so bad. I think it'll work. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. Should have made this a little bit deeper, I think. It would have helped a little bit, but I think it'll be okay. I think after I do this, I need to do the other colors I'm going to do just so that I know that. Oops, messed that up. Quick, need to fix it. Cool, it's not totally ruined. this point I do need to dry this out
You guys make your own coffee at home? Because sometimes I make my own. I make my own iced coffee. And sometimes I make it and it absolutely blows my mind how good it tastes. And then there's other times I make it and I'm like, that was just so meh. That right there is one of the ones that I am so shocked at my <laughs> how it turned out. Uh, need to make hype for Revcon. Well, I, I do. Um, my biggest focus right now is this Kickstarter. Because if this uh, Kickstarter does not do well, I have to make some different decisions here very soon. So I really, uh, all my focus is on that right now. If that makes sense. After that, depending on how things are secured, uh, be able to shift to Revcon uh, big stuff. Sala's back. Sometimes I make my bean water. It's just absolutely perfect. Yeah, see? And yeah, and then I can't make it again. And it really irritates me. For the most part, I drink the uber cheap stuff instead of my best friend. <laughs> well, like I, at this point, I now grind my own coffee uh, with a, uh, like a ninja bullet or something. And, and uh, because we found out that apparently when they make other like instant coffees or just other bagged coffee that they can put fillers into that that isn't actually coffee um and that kind of upsets me that it could be things like sticks and uh, i don't want to drink sticks i want to drink coffee that's why i paid for that so i now grind it myself because then i know that it was just a bean in there because i saw it <laughs> but i have I wasn't even really a big coffee person until the last couple of years, uh, and mostly that's because I didn't, I don't like hot drinks. And then I realized, well, I can make it myself, and I can put ice in it, right? I can make it as sweet as I want. So that's what I do. Now, question. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back and touch up all those trees, but they do definitely. They now are elevated from the rest of it, so that's good. I think I'm gonna have to paint the border. I'm thinking of doing black so that it just looks clean. Because I think black will be an easier color to do for the outside border. And I'm thinking of doing white lettering and maybe a white trim. But I feel like white might be too... I don't know. It might be code name for that. Whoa. <laughs> so the question is, do I do like a really strong, clear white? Or do I do like an off white? What is this? I have an ivory, so it's not quite white. Might be a better way to go. So, I don't even know if I've used this yet. <laughs> I have not. Hello. Get back in there. It's definitely off-white. But I guess if I paint it with this first, then I could always go back with regular white, and it would be easier than painting white onto the green. Let's try that. See what this looks like. How this goes. 
the siege is doing it just straight out of the bottle. So I need a really yeah, I guess I'll just use this because I can really control it. Just do this here. Yeah, I think this is going to look like a warmer white. I think it'll look better, at least on this color. I'd like them all to stay the same, just so that it's easier for me. Because you're kind of just using the same, you know, couple of colors. But if I need to change it, that's okay too. the object is like when it's on the table you can immediately see what it is for the players and I, I think that works that looks that looks really good just keep my hand mostly steady so I don't have to s yell some sort of expletive because I messed up <laughs> and these don't have to be a hundred percent perfect because they're terrain templates rather than you know showcased model but I'd like them to be obviously presentable because I'm trying to promote my game with it it's you know still a thing Yeah, look at that. That looks nice. I like that. <laughs> yeah. A number seven. I don't have number seven. I have small layer. <laughs> but Kusala is right. You guys should have seen these before because I, I, he was helping me um, kind of just design these. I was doing a lot of it, but he was helping every now and then to jump in on certain parts. And he was helping with, uh, we were trying to do a different design instead of doing the trees like they are now. And yeah, it, it, the idea was great. The execution of it did not work, but that's how it be sometimes. You think it'll be good and you start doing it. You're like, you know what? I don't like that. <laughs> The only way to know that is to try it. I bought this thing because I'm trying to, you know, like, you know, pet myself up and stuff now. I have this thing hanging off on the side of the wall. It says, mistakes are proof you are trying. And when I saw that, I was like, you know what? I'm getting that. Because one of the biggest things that held me back for a long time was not wanting to make a mistake. Because, well, how can I take it back? How can I fix it? And that is, that is nice. I really am proud of that. <laughs> yeah, my, my painting philosophy is if, if it can even be labeled as such has always has been for a long time now. But whatever colors I use, they need to be vibrant. They need, like, the way that they work together needs to really stand out so that images are very obvious. I don't know if I always nail it, but that's the goal. I mean, that really... 
makes those stand out. Is num number seven is probably like the bigger brush that Games Workshop makes, right? So that's probably a really big brush. Oh no! I'm gonna diffuse that immediately. With water. Attack it. Guess I could always put a wash in there after. Guess I could do it right now. Haha! <laughs> Take that! Stupid ivory paint that's not supposed to be there! Absolutely purple. Thank you for stopping by, Austin. I'll be doing this more often, so hopefully I'll see you again soon. Have a good one. Tried to get in there, but you didn't. Tried to ruin it, but you weren't successful. Well, I do hope so, Purple. That would be cool. Tell you what, this does look pretty good. Can definitely see it. Ah. It worked. The damp brush got it. Kursala was right. is a painting wizard. Use a 7, 2, and sorted. Yeah, I, I do a lot of stuff with this one uh, or other brushes that are basically in the same realm of like all the really fine tip. And that's just basically how I do all the work. Yeah, no, it worked. You were right. I mean, it, it, it kind of worked out because I wasn't listening to you. And then I still had it nearby because it was still damp. And I was glad I did. <laughs> yeah. Woods. Bean water time. 
when I can enjoy some too. Uh, he was. I think he's technically paused that temporarily, but he still has all of those skills. He's also, like, classically trained on how to paint. So he has a different level of approach than uh, what I do with my caveman skills. Me, me paint brush with brush. What? <laughs> It's just a personal point of privilege, Chrysala. It's nothing to worry about. It technically is an unfair advantage, but, you know. I guess I could go get classically trained, but, you know. <laughs> I prefer magic bean juice. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds... That sounds kind of gross, but it... it I don't know, in my mind, it's just like drinking the liquid out of the baked beans can. <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> he has. I've seen a little bit, just a touch some of the stuff he's working on. I don't even know if he's trying to like sell that stuff though that I've seen. By the time this is done, I'm going to so hate painting lines. So I'll go through a phase of like painting a bunch and I'll be like, I don't want to touch another friggin paintbrush. And then I won't for a while. And then I'll come back. <laughs> I'll find some other project to hate. <laughs> Good news. I'm well on my way with this one. <laughs> You don't want baked beans. Go with garbanzo. Oh, gosh. Don't drink. Ugh. It's like drinking the, the juice out of the uh, tuna cans. Mmm. Vegetable oil. I understand that perfectly, perfectly, Kersal. I hate sharing stuff too early because if it sucks, then I'm stuck with like, oh, everyone knows. And then everyone knows it sucks. Why have I done this to myself again? I like painting that tree white for no friggin' reason. Ivory. Ah. Never is a long time there. Makes a good substitute for eggs. What? Who hurt you? I don't see how that's even remotely a possible true statement.
Pretty freaking crisp. Chicken there, Krasava. Doesn't whose kid is allergic to a bunch of stuff so undercooked? Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. And then fry them in butter. <laughs> now, I, I definitely get the whole like having to like come up with alternative ways of doing stuff like that because uh, uh, we've had to do that for our own uh, needs. One of my kids isn't allergic to anything, but there's certain foods he can't have, so we have discovered ways around the typical well it's really it's more of making it ourselves as opposed to using a lot of box things so you get the same effect at the end of the day but you didn't have to do it the way that many other people would I'm not gonna do too I, I just freaking messed that up oh my gosh I don't think I'm gonna go crazy I'm trying to make this perfect but it's the first one so I don't know how much work to do exactly till it's done <sighs> oh. see now I'm using a bigger brush and then I'm being sloppy and I'm having to make fix things and I don't want to be fixing thinking of doing is taking a sponge when this is done and sponging it with like brown or something else to just kind of make it look more worn so then it'll uh not have to look crisp and clean it can look dirty you know and maybe that'll help to excuse some of the uh inconsistencies with it Let's see if this will stick Perfect. Now we're going to do black. What is this? I don't want to use that black. Heck with that black. Yeah. Army pointer black. <laughs> Learn brush control. Says the guy who paints with a seven. But Rick, I have great brush control. Well, you're a robot. It is a skill issue. I'm only blaming myself. this brush be my ally or my foe? And I have a particular brush that does very well this one. But will it do well today? We'll find out. Start with one of the... Oh, that looks really... really watery. Maybe I need to... Where did I put the black? Where the hell? Oh, there it is. You could be cheating by using robot arms. That is true. I didn't actually consider that. And if you are cheating by using robot arms, I guess good on you, because like I, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that at all. black can't see it because it just disappears but i am painting it mm 
I guess you can just see the green disappearing, so I guess that sort of makes it work. I get a different brush for the top so I don't accidentally touch any of the trees. This one just works really well for this part of it. Uh, uh I guess we'll use this one. See how this does. Those lines aren't straight. gonna see my non-straight lines and laugh at me robot hospital games I, I, I well I know I could use a bigger brush and it would go faster but then I'd be afraid that I'm gonna mess it up And then I'd be sad faced because then I messed it up. It's a long way to go with making just a straight line the whole way. Mistake. They should have painted the sides after. That brush is stupid. I'm not using that one. Let's try this one. Let's see if it'll work. Ah. Stress, self imposed stress. <laughs> no, make myself stress. <laughs> Don't mess it up. <laughs> Set that brush down so I can focus. Ah. It'll look awful. Bigger slap, brush faster. What? Well, <laughs> I feel like that's gonna make it worse. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna make it worse. there and then the first one might be done outside of the muddy look so close
All right. Ooh, that looks pretty good. <laughs> no, I don't want to sneeze and mess it up. Don't even say that. No. I'm going to set it down so I don't laugh when I'm holding it. <laughs> so what do you guys think in terms of, like, making it look dirty? I could use, like, dark stone... I could use like a gun metal. I could just use a like a chocolate brown. Like what do you what do you think in terms of making it look used? What else I could do Gorgon. I have lots of browns, but I don't I don't know. I don't know if brown is the right I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I don't know if it's better to leave it. Or cause what I was thinking of using was like one of these sponges and just you know, just dabbing some weathering to it. I don't know. I, I so like I've done on some of the models, uh, just a light sponging just so that it, it looks like it's been in a war zone. Um, but I don't know if that looks good. Uh, well, I'm thinking grime is what I'm thinking. If I had a pick. But I mean, like. If you look down at the table, right? Like if this was in a video and you just look down at the table and it had all the other terrain tiles and stuff like this pops really well. Maybe I should just leave it. Just just leave it because it is very it's very vibrant as is. It's very clear what it is. And this is one of the smaller ones. I think on the bigger tiles it'll do better. Like uh like when I get this one done I think this one will be very, very vibrant. And may maybe, maybe it's not worth doing the grime stuff. And maybe I don't even have to decide yet. Like I just do, just do all the woods ones like this level, see what it looks like, then go from there rather than trying to be like, oh, well I have to decide right this second. And maybe that's, maybe that's the better place. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Will. I think I'm going to, I am going to leave it for now come back later I'm just gonna touch up this spot of the green I just can hit that other spot with a little bit of black just to make it look a little better Yeah, and I think that's a good point, Grisala, because it's not it's not a model, right? And at the same time, too, it's like, do you want to spend an hour on each of these? No, I don't. I don't even want it to come close to that. So really, there should be a, a cutoff point and be like, yeah, it's good enough. And I, I hate being like that, but this might be one of those projects where it needs to be like that. Not every project is the... Uh, let's let's do hours and hours of work on it because it's not going to be showcased in a bunch of uh, you know product images so I think I'm just going to leave it I yank it up you know I'm going to leave it here though so it can be admired next to woods but they're on fire that would be cool. Should 
check something on my phone real quick before I I mean, that could certainly be a thing, because I have a lot of flock and stuff that I could do to the trees. That might be worth considering down the road. Could be different. Text message. Oh. She's just saying okay. That's better. Thankfully, that's an easy thing to fix. All this is ready. It'll be super cool for the Kickstarter. Adjacent to the text block. I don't want to mess this up.
think I have an idea for what I want to do for the rugged tiles. I'm thinking of doing tan on them. Like a different, like a lighter shade, maybe, or maybe a maybe a darker brown. Maybe that'll do. And I was thinking for the blocking of doing black for the stripes. Yeah, I mean, that would work. I don't know if it would accomplish what I'm trying to, or if people would think it looks as good for the images. You know, it's always so hard to tell. You just have to go with your gut. There's too much get in my own head. <laughs> That's pretty much always a thing though that I'm trying to watch out for. become more sensitive and aware of how much that actually is a thing for me. Appreciate that. I'm apparently getting my head in my shot. I need to be careful of that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Put my elbow somewhere. I didn't realize I was doing that. I'm sorry. Look up and I see my own head there. One day maybe you'll stream Chrysala and you'll see how hard it is not to get your own head in your own shot. What'd you do all day? Oh, I painted trees on a little template I made. That's good. How many did you get done? I like two. <laughs> well, maybe you will. Maybe that's right. I think, uh... 
it's harder to do than you think. Although I would like to eventually have the camera be above. But I don't know if I'll... I haven't been able to figure out a way to do it adequately yet. So I'm trying to just remember to keep my freaking head out of the shot. But sometimes I get so into the painting part, and then I'm just like, zoned in. It makes sense, it's just a terrible excuse. Because <laughs> I'm painting so far from my face, and I normally... I'm a lot closer, so he'll struggle with. Are you saying he's short, <laughs> or just that his arms are short? He's got T-Rex arms. You mount it above your monitors won't that be like you're painting oh. <laughs> no. it's a good thing it's all being green you can't tell i messed up <laughs> won't that look like like it's almost upside down to the viewer from that angle my head's in the shot all right, I'm moving it. I'm gonna move it. I'm not gonna be in your shot. There, is my head out of the shot? Yeah, now it's out of the shot. Stupid head. Now I'm gonna be like super self-conscious of it. I mean, I guess it does sound like a them problem, but it'd be like a them problem that you're causing. <laughs> so it's a you problem. <laughs> it's gone back around to you. Moving on from these lower trees, we're going to the higher trees, monkeys. I wonder if there's a planet in Revelations that has like Le legitimate flying monkeys like in Wizard of Oz that'd be absolutely terrifying <laughs> actually winged monkeys I I guess I guess that's true well <laughs> a weird way to phrase it it's a really weird way to phrase it is my head in the shot no i'm just touching the camera it's okay my head's not in the shot my head's not in the shot how it is that I consistently find projects to do that sound so great and then end up being incredibly time consuming. I, I have a gift for that. Absolute gift. I guess I should be proud of that gift.
Oh. But I moved on from these lower trees, and here I am fixing them because I can see problems. My flying monkeys that have a proper tree to fly from. Now that that's a sh a quote to put on a T-shirt. That's your real secret skill. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like you haven't encountered it before. Hey, Kursala, this will be a really quick project. <laughs> but wait, what if we did this? Oh, yeah. But it's not just you. I do it to myself. Like, I consider just doing these tiles as just being like one color and I was like, no, that's going to look bad. Like if I just spray paint them a color, that's not going to look professional. We want these to look like really, really nice. I want them to really stand out for the viewer. Or I can make myself suffer. I choose suffering. Which is probably scary in more ways than one. I've never been on Tumblr, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> it does... It, <laughs> it does sound like it may have some other ulterior meetings. Ulterior... alternate... Some other meaning that the youths use. The youths. I'm gonna set this aside because I need to use up this green before it goes bad because there's extra green here. So <laughs> look how many more there are! What was really smart was starting with the absolute smallest tile that I had because in that way I could only have more every time I grabbed a different one. Well, Sala's looking to tumble, obviously. What else do you do on that app? But maybe it's just because he likes to go on apps that are just known to have toxic communities, because I know he really likes Reddit. That's how he does all his secret research is on, on Reddit. I've tried to get on Reddit. I don't know. I just I keep forgetting to go back. So that's not really like a Reddit problem as much as just a me problem. A lot of people like Reddit, though. 
It's very popular for a reason. I know Battletech really likes to use it. <laughs> I only hear good things from that community. So much progress. Much wow. At this rate, I should probably lower my expectations for the day and just be thrilled if I finish painting the woods today. I mean, quite honestly, the reason I probably don't go on Reddit is because it's not really pop, like easy to make your own community in terms of like you have to have a community and then start a Reddit. And I don't think if I went over there, there would be anybody that would probably participate. It, it wouldn't be worth another place to monitor. Nice, nice, nice. Onboarding for the new job. Uh, it's not, well, I don't really think of it as like quitter talk as much as like, I only have so much time in the day. And if I don't go on Reddit, I can't be distracted by other Reddit boards. I already have that as much of an issue on other platforms like Facebook anyway. Stupid Facebook. Not today. Today I've been streaming. Knocking this stuff out. Putting new products up. Feels good to sell the Jupiter. Not have... I have been sitting on it for as long as I have. Now it's actually for sale. Gotta get that darn sentry out. social media I mean granted the other way my, my business has been able to happen is because of social media but yeah it's definitely one of those like I'm happy it's there I hate that it's there It is one thing though, like I miss having like your own forums because it's some, 
you know, it's kind of what it sort of feels like on Discord a little bit, where like it's your own community. On Facebook, it just doesn't work the same. Having a community, it just it just isn't the same creature. Now, I know you like to remind me of that. I I still don't think the internet was a mistake. I think our use of it is a mistake. But I don't know if it could have played out any different with the way people are. positives with social media but the the negatives are so massive that it's my head in the damn shot now it definitely is a borderline that it would have been better without it i would just have to i don't know what i'd be doing otherwise but i guess i could still be writing that part wouldn't necessarily have to change it'd be harder to find people to to read it though. Yeah, ooh, ah, it's so good. Going pretty well. I'm glad that I did the streaming today. I mean, doesn't feel like I did a tremendous amount of work. I know that I still spent the time, but I'm more proud of myself for actually getting the streaming going and beginning the first step to being regularly streaming. Upside is I can also do modeling and some other things on stream, so I can do some other stuff to vary out the work. I don't have the skills that others do, but you know, the only way to get better is to keep doing it.
<laughs> yeah, I guess it would be. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like my modeling is definitely still very amateur. Like I'm able to do like stuff like this, but this isn't uh, rocket science. Not some uh, overly elaborate uh, skill set required. But it is still probably cool. I mean, it's cool doing it, but I mean, it would definitely be interesting from the viewer perspective of seeing a project like this get to the point where it's uh, all the way a completed thing from the modeling phase through, you know, the painting phase. Especially if you're interested in learning how to do some of this for your own game or your own your own projects. Well, if you would like to join in sometime, I'd be more than happy to have you in there. It'd probably be interesting as well just to have somebody else going in. Especially because, for those who don't know, I've been learning a lot of the modeling stuff I've been learning a lot has been from Kursala. Because we've been working together on projects. And I, I've been learning 3DS Max because that's what he uses. And it's not just because that's what he uses. It was... I've looked into other platforms, other other programs, and I felt like that was one I could actually learn after watching him do stuff for so long. And so far, you know, I've been able to do some things. Again, nothing, nothing nuts, but something. And that, you know, for me... At times, sometimes what I need is like having like a confidence boost like that I, I, I could do it. If I dive right into a type of project that's well out of my league, I don't have any idea what I'm doing. I don't know anyone who knows how to do it. So if I get stuck, I don't, you know, it, it, I kind of avoid those. So if I can approach it because I have a way to, to move forward, it helps me feel a lot better about it. No, because I, I was really heavily looking at using, um, oh my goodness, goodness, SketchUp? No. Yes? No. Yes? Well, whatever. That was another program I was super on the fence about. And at the end of the day, it did help weigh in that it would be one that we could just move back and forth on. But it did also seem like 3DS Max was something that I could understand, I could I could grasp. Unlike uh, a blender. Blender is some other sort of monster that you have to be a very patient individual, and I, I just, I don't have it right now anyway. Maybe later, but like right now, no. No, 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 no. But really, once I get down max and I become more proficient at it, I don't know why I would ever want to go to Blender. Um... Because anything that I don't know how to do in Max, or stuff that can't be done in Max, I could probably do in ZBrush. And I'd rather invest the time over there learning that program, because that one offers me a lot of other open doors.
but who knows. At the end of the day, I'm chasing results, not, not a program. <laughs> I guess I guess that is a way to look at it. Blender is great because it's basically a blender. It destroys all your hopes and dreams. The people who become proficient at it are nuts. Like they can really do some amazing things. But then they'll tell you that like, yeah, I wait I spent a couple years doing this. Ugh. Which, I guess, in your case, Kersal, it took you a couple years to get Max down, but, uh, like, Blender goes and changes their user interface, and now all of a sudden, you know, now they gotta learn all this other stuff. It's not like it, it stays the same, per se. So they don't want to upgrade, because now they gotta learn a whole new <laughs> layout and everything. Chunky smoothies are disgusting. I don't want that. Like, if you can make Blender work, man, more power to you. For real. Like, you can do some awesome stuff. But you do need to learn that not everything looks... Just because it looks good in Blender doesn't mean it actually is a good file. And we've run into that a number of times with modelers. That they think, like, well, it looks good in Blender. Well, yeah. But it could be a smooth that's on. It can be other things. And then once you get it out of that program, it doesn't always look great. So you got to be comfortable knowing that you may have to make adjustments to your models because they didn't translate well when they left. Because it doesn't matter how good it is in Blender if it doesn't work. That That's really, at the end of the day, your client or you are after a particular result. You know, you're not after uh, it to look good in Blender specifically. You need it to be renders, you need it to be a 3D digital model that's printable, or you need it to be a, a video game asset. Like, there's all these other things that you need it to be able to do. I guess if you're only making movies or animations in Blender, you may not really care. But if it's ever leaving Blender, you, you do need to care. Big time. Oh, okay, eight months isn't so bad then, I guess, because... I, mean, I feel like I'm going to be on a slower track than that because I'm not using it every day. Blender really does seem like it takes several years. Like, I don't know if there's another way around that several year mark because there's it just, I don't know. Like, and I know some people who can really make use of Blender and they're really good at it. But then when they try to describe things to you, I don't know, it feels so backwards of how like I think and process information. And, and that might just be it. It might come down to the way that either you learn or the way that your brain works in a way. And, and at the end of the day, it's okay. If, if Blender's not for you, that's okay. There's other platforms. Blender is great because it's free. Max really effectively only costs a couple hundred dollars a year, which sounds like a lot for a hobbyist, but if you're trying to do it professionally, a couple hundred dollars to use a program that could maybe make you 
thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, isn't really so bad. You know, I feel like sometimes this green is like really thick and it seems to not just be not covering so well at other times. It might just be hard to tell at this angle that I'm painting in. Yeah, and and I, I wouldn't even feel bad at that point though, Chrysala, because I'd be making plenty of money that I think, like, whatever. I, if I can use this program and generate 100 plus K a year, I'm fine paying full price because I'm I'm more than making up for it. But getting to that point is obviously its own journey. I would happily pay them for the full price though, at that level. Granted, I knew what it took to get there, right? So uh, I have a different appreciation. I'm already very appreciative that they offer a small studio discount. So that way I am able to more easily afford it and move forward with it without feeling so crushed by the, the weight of it. Oh, yeah. Is I 
Talking about your own paperwork? Whoa. For all that, that would come with a, a bigger company. No. I, I asked two questions. I don't know what no yes is supposed to mean. There's such a lag in between when I ask and people answer. I've already forgotten. I'm supposed to do with a yes. I'll just touch wet paint. Ah, oh, butts. I may have touched wet paint. <laughs> At least I'm not the only one confused. <laughs> Is this on the stream? Oh, it is just barely, but it is on the stream. Huzzah. Huzzah, huzzah. Hmm. Why isn't it fun, though? You're getting it for your new job. Like, isn't that... Isn't that great? You're gonna go make all that money? Give me a rolling in it. I'm buying a new house. I'll be biggest smile on my face. Be like, I don't care how many pages it is. Not all of us got woe money though. That's why. That's this that's this is white privilege. Showing. It's sad, really. Are you doing drugs though? Is that why you don't like doing this paperwork? Feeling guilty this whole time. But if you were using drugs, it may make the paperwork not feel so boring. Is that a life hack? Is there fun paperwork? Well, I mean, there's a fun outlook on paperwork. Like, I'd much rather be doing paperwork because my company is super successful than not. So it in itself may not be enjoyable, but I will have fun doing it because it means things require that much paperwork. Oops. Hopefully you guys couldn't hear me scratching the 
microphone with my paintbrush handle. Maybe Kursala won the lottery. So it was fun for him to fill all that paperwork. Because he was about to make a bunch of money. Well, that sounds kind of like fake news, though. I'll tell you that. How can you enjoy something but say it's not fun? Fake news. Fake news. I see through the lies of the Jedi. They do not enjoy filling out their W-2s. <laughs> Level 7 woods. <laughs> I probably will at some point. I want to make... And I made sure to make... Sh when I was designing these. That everything was going to be... I did not put... Wash on that. What the... F well, dang it. I missed that. I missed... I missed this one too. And it looks like I missed this one. Oh, crap. I gotta go back and fix that. Um... But I made sure to, to make that still editable so that I can go back and add that later because I do want to do that. Different sizes for everything. That'll be fun. Fun, 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 fun. It's better to find out now that I need to go back and touch this up than it is in a few hours when I'm trying to paint the rest of the details and then freak out. And it finished, man. Did do that one. Fake nose or news? And I'm not news. You're wrong, Persala. I am not news. Neither fake nor real. my paintbrush all messed up. Haka. This isn't the... I was a mixing brush. I just didn't rinse it. Whoops. Okay, then I went around and touched all this, so I messed up what I did do. Goofy goobers!
Wow. I'm much too old for that. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I guess I probably am. But anyway, that's beside the point. So weird. I realized recently that I was middle aged. I hadn't thought of it like that until at that point. And I was telling my wife, I was like, you know, I'm I'm not a young man anymore. <laughs> it hadn't hit me. It like I I knew it, but it hadn't registered, I guess. I hadn't thought of myself that way yet. Truthfully, it didn't make me feel great. Yes, that is true. Absolutely still young at heart. And still... Still young in comparison to things, but not... Uh, definitely see now how I'm getting the sir treatment when I go places. <laughs> and it feels weird because it's like when I, when I used to work at Chick-fil-A... I was still pretty close in age to the, like in, in terms of years distance while I was older than a lot of the employees, because a lot of the employees are teenagers, right? There's plenty of adults, but a lot of them are teenagers. You feel closer in age, um, maybe not in behavior, but in terms of, of age, like when you're in your 20s, you're pretty close to teenagers in terms of, of your age gap. And then, like, now, if I went back, it'd be mid-30s now, it, it would it would be, like, a vast, a vast difference. Especially now, because I actually, I have kids of my own. And I was there, I only had one. My wife was pregnant with our second. But I was still in my 20s. Yeah. Yeah, because I left six years ago, so I would have been 29. Why is that, Crystal? Is that just you being silly? But yeah, it's weird. you were younger than me
Yo. Wanna do too much. Oh. <laughs> Thirty-five. This is so weird. <laughs> At that age now, we're like, you don't care how old you are. <laughs> like, you know, there's nothing. There's no like, ooh, thirty-five. Wow, look at that. Yeah, whatever. If anything, I'd rather not think about it. <laughs> you thought I was older than that? Oh, oh, you turn. Turn out. Whoa. Yeah, I'll be 36 later this year. Woo. I know a lot of the frustration in terms of like my age is um, wanting to have accomplished more things by now so that's the measuring stick of like time keeps moving you haven't done the things you want to do but you're getting older but at the same time that's life you're always most of us will always feel that we haven't done all the things that we wanted to If I had done everything I sought out to do, I, I don't know I even know how I'd feel. That'd be find something else to do. Thankfully, I haven't had that happen myself yet. Well, usually whenever somebody guesses my age, they're basically right on. Which is weird. I don't know how they're able to do that. Before I had my beard, or any facial hair really, just because I wasn't allowed to have any at Chick-fil-A, because I don't want to have a mustache, um, I would often get mistaken for being younger. I used to work with my younger sister. She's quite a bit younger than me, like seven years. And when we would work together, every now and then one of the, you know, the teenagers we worked with would try to guess our ages and they always put her higher than me she would get so upset and i would just bust out laughing because she'd get so mad about it I had that happen recently, Chrysala, where, like, I had forgotten. And I was like, wait, am I? No, yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> that happened on your wedding day? That's hilarious. It's <laughs> hilarious. Sir, are you supposed to be here? Oh, yeah, no, I'm the one getting married. Uh, <laughs> sure you are. 
It's one of them shotgun weddings. Closing in on the never gets carded age. <laughs> I used to always and and uh granted I don't really do anything out now to get carded, but um I still do sometimes and other times I don't. Okay, cool. I'm I'm at the age where you no longer care. Hooray, you're not gonna ask. But then there's other places, like at least in Florida, where they have to ask you, even, like up until you look 40. So even if they do ask, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's hilarious. Though the places that ask when you're like some little old lady, you've got gray hair, wrinkles, all this, and they're like, "I need to see your ID, please." Store policy: I have to see your ID to make sure that you're 18. Like, what? You're going to ask some gray-haired old lady. You're going to stop her and bother her for her ID. Really? It's a stupid policy. Who had more hair than face? It's <laughs> a lot of hair. Oh, barnacles. Oh, gosh. Getting worse. There we go. My mop brush was dry. These ones here definitely... Bad, but they you know, a little bit more of a lip here to be obvious what it turns. Thankfully, once I get this part done, this is definitely the more tedious part. Coming in here and pick each of these trees. Now we have three more. Those won't all get done on this screen. Can you keep changing that slogan there? Like, are you allowed to? I guess no one's gonna stop you, but... <laughs> it's your slogan. I feel like you're... You gotta be like, copyright infringement on yourself. <laughs> Bigger mop wet sooner? 
Anybody? 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 Bigger mop? Bigger mop here. Bigger mop here. I don't, I just don't think dry brush is going to work the same. I don't think it's going to visually pop as well. At least that's what my thought is. My thought could be wrong. Maybe I'll try dry brushing on one of the other designs and see how that works. Because there's been plenty of times I've been wrong about my approach on things. I'm not afraid to admit it. Ah, but see now, woe has stolen your phrase. So now it is all of our phrase, comrade. You've given it to the fatherland. How brave of you. Beautiful and brave of you. Painting on my own fingertips. It is not supposed to go there. It's supposed to go on the model. this overall yes. and we got it pretty nice ouch I guess that's true it is the downside number of phrase and all it knock everything over. Whoop. Put some of this back that can be put back. It makes sense to put back. And I'm uh I need me a painting break. Very happy with how that other one turned out, so I'm going to be ending things for now. Thank you guys very much for joining me on this painting endeavor, and I'm going to be resuming painting. Or, uh, yeah, I'll probably still be painting this week on Thursdays. I'm not sure if I have a plan for Tuesdays and Thursdays having like a different theme to them, but at least in the short term, I just have to paint a bunch of stuff. So Thursday, I'll also be painting. So look forward to that if you guys are interested. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to knock some of this other stuff out and I'll be able to start showing pictures pretty soon. All right. Thank you guys. Talk to you soon.